for Ukrainian immigrants who are facing hate crime charges for a vicious attack. They're accused of ganging up on a man because of his sexual orientation and beating him so badly he's lost his vision. These four suspects are being held without bond right now, and Local 10's Rosh Lowe is live with our one and only exclusive interview with the family. Rosh. Christy, boy, is this a wild story. I'll tell you why. On one hand, you have the state saying this was the vicious beating of a gay man. On the other hand, you have the defense saying, wait a minute, not so fast. The victim changed his story, claimed he was dating one of the family members, which the defense says is simply not true. So you don't believe your fiance was dating this man? No, I know he wasn't. And your proof of that is? <laughs> My ring. Christina Herman in tears says her 21-year-old fiancé loves her. And both her fiancé and his family would never beat a gay man to the point he became blind. Her 17-year-old sister agrees. If your mom and dad are watching this somehow, what would you want to tell them? They, they don't deserve this. None of innocent people should go through this. Prosecutors say they have filed hate crime charges against family members accused of severely beating a man because of the sexual orientation. He could have died if law enforcement didn't happen to find him. Let's wait and see what evidence, what actual evidence there is against this family. Because so far, there's been none presented other than one person's story that changed after six and a half months. The family and their attorney, Mike Glasser, says the cops have it all wrong. The beating happened August 6th. Initially, according to the suspect's attorney, the victim told cops that he was drunk and fell. Six months later, there were charges after the victim changed his story, says Glasser, that he was dating one of the sons, Ola. Ola, who also goes by Alex, denied that, says Glasser, and so does his fiance. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about a vicious hate crime. An alleged vicious hate crime coming out of Florida, of course, against a gay man, American, who was beaten up by a family of Ukrainians who were pissed off because according to them and the prosecutors, they were mad because their son here, Ole, uh, the guy on the left with the ridiculous mohawk type haircut, um, they thought that this American who they beat up turned their son gay, okay? And because of that reason, they went to his house back in August of 2021, and they beat him an inch close to death. He has been permanently blinded, and he can no longer take care of himself. He almost died, and he came out and spoke to um, a local newspaper or uh, news station yesterday on May 12th, 2022, and he explained exactly what happened here. He has been permanently blinded. He said that the attack was because he was gay, and and the family found out and they thought that he somehow forcibly turned their son gay. They, of course, deny all this. As you guys saw in the beginning, they claim that this guy, the son here, Ole uh, Mekarenko, was married or en engaged to somebody. He had a fiance. And therefore, they're, the defense is saying that they couldn't possibly have done this because he's not gay. I don't believe that for a second. Uh, you guys saw the fiance in the beginning of the video, the intro video I played you. They're like, oh, with their, you know, their Ukrainian accent. Um, they was, she was saying that uh, he could, I don't believe any of these allegations because I have a ring. Oh, look at me. I have a ring. Yes, because, uh, because you know, gay men who are, uh, who have been taught that being gay is wrong, never suppress their sexual, uh, sexual inclinations and, and marry women, right? So, of, co of course they do. We all know this, but uh, they think it's uh, some kind of grand uh, uh, defense it is not we'll get to the evidence against them in a second but anyways he said that he's no longer take be able to take care of himself or his mom he used to take care of his mom but now he can no longer do it so this is a very sad story with obviously you know uh terrible consequences they have all been charged with um a first degree attempted murder um, all four of them have been charged. They were in prison up until recently. The mom was let out on bail, but all three of these guys are still in prison uh, or in jail, I should say, uh, because they have not been granted bail. OK, so the facts of the case are very simple. Back on August 6th, after finding out 
um, about the fact that their son, Ole, had a gay relationship, had a boyfriend and a gay relationship with this guy. The family got pissed off, what broke into the uh, the uh, victim's apartment complex and beat him half to death. OK, he was lying there for hours until the cops found him on a separate uh, separate call. They weren't actually the cops were not actually looking for him. He was just lying there, um, you know, very. Uh, reaching death uh, when the cops eventually found them. The deputy said he ended up being uh, intubated for approximately three weeks and was on a feeding tube for approximately three months. Uh, injuries included uh, a concussion, severe bruising and swelling, a uh, misaligned left eye, brain swelling and a uh, fractal jaw, fractured jaw. And the defense is using the fact that he took a long time to come forward as an excuse to say that nothing happened and uh, his defendants are totally innocent. So Michael Glasser is the defense attorney uh, for these people and say that they didn't even know this guy. Oh, what, what do you mean? How could they have beat him up when they didn't even know him? And he, he says that some other person must have uh, been responsible for these poor this poor guy's injuries. Now, there is uh, some some problems in uh, the story of the victim. And these are understandable problems. Anybody who knows about, um, you know, uh, criminology and how victims hold back certain details knows that this is how it works in uh, rape cases. This happens all the time where uh, the rape victim withholds certain details for, for a time. So this guy took nine months uh, to come forward. And that's what he's using to say that it didn't really happen. Um, when he first came forward, when he when he was first uh, taken to the hospital, when the authorities first talked to him after uh, his injuries had been treated, he said that he fell down the stairs. And he explained in this uh, interview why he said that. He said that because he didn't want to get Ole in trouble because he was in love with that guy. OK, despite the fact that his family came and beat him, he still didn't want to throw Ole under the bus, which is understandable. Women routinely do this to uh, to uh, protect their rapist husbands and their boyfriends. You know, that's like that's what victims do. And there's a track record of it. That's just what happens. And this guy did the same thing. Now the defense is trying to use that against him to say that the attack didn't really happen. Do you really think that he fell down the stairs and fractured his eye and received all these other injuries? I've literally fallen down the stairs in high school. I didn't get any injuries, actually. I kind of scraped my uh, uh, my uh, elbow a little bit. That's about it. OK, this guy was beaten severely with broken bones. So, of course, uh, of course, this happened and it was not from him falling down the stairs. And women who are domestic abuse victims used to say back in the 90s that they hit, ran into a door. This is a, these are classic excuses that are used by victims who don't want to point to their perpetrators because they have a misguided loyalty to them. And that's what this guy had. OK, but I have no doubt uh, that they actually did it. So let's get to the evidence that the police have. So this is the best piece of evidence that the police has. And this is not a, you know, slam dunk case by any means. Uh, the judge can still determine that there isn't enough evidence to proceed or the jury, if it goes that far, can determine that there's not enough evidence. But this is the best evidence that they have so far. So law and crime here provides some information regarding what the deputies had to say. Uh, so we're going to get to that right now. Uh, the Makarenkos, including Ole, allegedly attacked the man in his apartment after the family discovered the gay relationship, which stretched from November 2020 to the alleged attack. Toward the end, of July 2020, Ole and the man allegedly did not speak for two weeks after getting into an argument. During this time, now this is from the deputies, uh, the victim logged onto his, his laptop, which Ole had previously used. He then located text messages from Ole's mother, Inna Makarenko. The text messages which were sent to Ole stated that Ole's father found out that he was a homosexual and had a boyfriend. The victim then made phone contact with Ole, who advised him that his father was um, now treating him poorly and was not accepting him. He also advised that his mother was going to force him to marry a woman. So this matches up with what exactly what happened. So there's way too many details here for this not to be true. Like I said, uh, people from Ukraine and Russia are very anti-gay. That does not mean that every single one of them are, but a lot of them are. And I have no doubt believing that this is possible. Otherwise, we would have to believe that that this this random guy, random American gay guy accused this guy Ole out of nowhere. Why would he do that? There's no other. There's nothing else for him to gain by accusing this person. 
Okay, he's not doing a civil suit against him. He's not trying to get money from him. The prosecutors are uh, are uh, going after them for attempted murder because they beat him uh, nearly half death. Okay, the prosecutors are doing. There's no there's no monetary gain for the victim here. Okay, now he, now I think he has all the grounds in the world to sue sue them civilly for his dam for damages. He's no longer able to work, no longer able to take care of his mom. They've ruined his life, so they, he should file a civil suit. But I'm glad that he hasn't yet, because then he's gonna then you know the defense can portray him as a money grubber, which is what these disgusting defense attorneys do to rape victims and other uh, victims of hate crimes. They try to use any kind of trick to discredit them uh, to the jury. We're willing to consider custodial interference too. Consider it. You will consider a misdemeanor instead of three felony indictments. Alex, there's got to be room for some maneuvering here. Not this time. Barnett wants to put this behind him. You tell him to plead guilty. It'll save everybody a lot of time. You know you got him when the defense starts professing concern about the victim. He is as bad as his client. Hoping the victim is too traumatized to testify. He's lucky I didn't knock his teeth down his throat. But um, he's not trying to get any money, and uh, only the prosecutors are going after him for, for after them for justice. Okay, so obviously they're not they're long time or longer time immigrants. They're not you know uh, refugees from the war or something. So this has nothing to do with what's going on in Ukraine. There's just a bunch of immigrants who we allowed to come here, and then they went on to beat up one of our citizens because they didn't like the fact that he was gay. Okay, so. If you're if 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 a country is is uh, kind enough to take you in, you don't get to come into our country and attack our citizens. So these people should be deported immediately after they're found guilty. Okay, after they serve out their prison sentence, that's justice. Okay, and if this guy died, I will be calling for the death penalty for all four of these people. Okay, but now we're not we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. Like I said, the victims, all the physical evidence or most of the physical evidence, I'm guessing, has been uh, destroyed at this point because he because the police didn't investigate because he said that he fell down the stairs. Right. So there's no physical evidence against them. So it's going to be very hard for the prosecutors to make uh, make a case. Hopefully they actually uh, acquire this laptop and find these text messages that uh, the victim says he saw. And I have no reason to believe that he's lying. But the prosecutor, it's going to be very difficult to make a case for attempted murder with the evidence that that they have so far. So hopefully they can get the, these text messages because that would be strong evidence of motive. Um, and all of this makes sense. The father started treating the son worse because he thought he was gay. This is, you know, a textbook stuff of how homophobes act, religious homophobes from this part of the world. Uh, they're very similar to Muslims who hate gay people as well, and also evangelicals in America and Catholics who turn their backs and disown their children when they find out they're gay. So this matches up with that, but that doesn't mean that it's absolutely true. Like I said, this is going to be a very difficult case for the prosecution because they have no physical evidence to back up their story here. The victim doesn't have anything other than their word and his injuries to prove it, but the, the, but the defense is going to say that we don't know how he got his injuries. Our clients didn't do it. That's what they're going to say. Okay. So I'm going to be keeping up with this. I'm going to see what happens with them. There's no way they're going to take a plea. Uh, I don't think unless the prosecution finds much more damning evidence. So they're probably going to go to trial and there's a very strong chance that they can get off because even if the jury believes his story, according to the legal standard, there has to be much stronger evidence to find somebody, a, a group of people found, find them guilty on attempted murder. The bar for that is very high. There's a possible life sentence that can be given to them with the hate crime enhancement um, uh, for attacking a gay person. Okay, So they face a long time in prison, and therefore the evidentiary basis for finding them guilty is very high. And the prosecution right now it's it's an iffy case. Okay, so I believe the victim in this case because this story makes perfect sense to me, but that doesn't mean that they'll be able to prove it at trial. So we're gonna have to see what happens there. But I'll be keeping up with this. Uh, we can't have people, no matter how how you feel about gay people, you can't be going around beating people up. You're breaking the law, and these people are all criminals if they actually did it. Again, okay? I believe that they did. But we'll see what happens to them. So that's all I gotta say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And if you want to support my show, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. With that being said, see you guys next time. As always, peace. Gentlemen, the great hall of justice is now in session. Bring forth the accused. Members of the council. 
Today I have received evidence that two innocent newsmen have been murdered by a senior judge. Judge Dredd. How does the accused plead? Not guilty. And let the trial commence. They're calling it the trial of the 90s. Mega City's greatest hero has been charged on two counts of murder, and the evidence sure looks damning. Born in 2066, Joe Dredd was cloned from the genetic material of the first chief judge, Judge Fargo. Having proved exceptional at the Academy of Law, Dredd graduated two years early. In 20 years of service, he's played a key role in public affairs, most notably during the Robot Wars. All right, Meckhead, download this. Armor piercing. Armor piercing. <laughs> And his recent mercy dash across the cursed earth, the thousand mile nuclear desert between Mega City 1 and Mega City 2, inhabited only by mutants. I've got a lot of people counting on me. I ain't gonna let some three headed creep stand in my way. Engine on. Running. He's a lean, mean justice machine. He saved the city time and time again. The big question now is, can he save himself? 